Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talking Numbers. It's our Mastering Profit series. It's series two, and it's brought to you by Profit Master Global Outsourcing. My name is Paul Jantz, and it is fantastic to be back. Now, this six-part series, we're going to break down a few key things. It's probably going to be over a 15 to 20-minute series. Um, we're going to recommence the chat about people and how you can start to look at your, let's call it your people model, and how you can look at it differently to increase profit in your business model. And it's following on from a lot of the key things we did in our series one. So if you if you haven't looked at our series one, go back, check out our YouTube page, all of it's there, or go into Spotify and search for Talking Numbers, Mastering Profit. Now, in this second series, these are the key things we're gonna focus on. We're gonna talk about how to deal with the skill shortage. We know it's a massive issue right now in Australia, and we're going to break that down. Are you a leader or a manager? That's episode number two. Episode number three, we're going to work on communication and why is communication important in management? We're going to look at three ways to prevent victim blaming, blaming sorry, and happening in your workplace. I know victim blaming is a, is a really interesting one. So I look forward to delving a little bit deeper into that and giving you guys some, some really good thoughts about how you can start to work through that. Achieving maximum client satisfaction, it's probably something that um, with my coaching hat on, I used to do a lot and talking about what is client satisfaction, what do clients want, what do we provide? So we're going to delve into that a little bit deeper. And then we'll end this series talking about respect, diversity, and creating culture in the workplace. So it's a six-part series. I mentioned before that my coaching background, I've done a lot of this sort of work, whether it be with firms in Australia, New Zealand, the US, the UK, parts of Asia, the problems are very similar. The challenges are very similar. They're the key things that we're going to focus on with the people aspect. Um, look, this continued series, again, is going to be with the founder and CEO of Profit Master. I've got Richard Croker. Rich, how are you? Welcome back, mate, to Talking Numbers Mastering Profit. Hey, Paul, how are you? And uh, very nice to be back. I can't believe that we're already in, well into the new year and uh, and it's, uh, I'm looking forward to going through this series with you. It's, uh, it's a great continuation of what we've been doing uh, as of last year. And I uh, look forward to sharing some of the, uh, the ideas around, uh, around people that we're continuing that theme into this year as well. Fantastic. Let's get into this. So let's talk about how to deal with the skill shortage. You know, I know that there's, there's some big research reports out there from the National Skills Commission that are talking about that the, the shortage has doubled from 2021 to 2022. Mm. Let's maybe start with what is, you know, the term skill shortage, what is it referring to? Yeah, because I think it's important to remember here, Paul, that when we talk about the skills shortage, it's not just happening in the accounting profession. It's throughout the professions and other, other uh, areas of expertise as well. But um, basically, from the accounting point of view, from the accountant's point of view, it's just an increasing inability to, uh, to secure um, competent and qualified staff to be able to do uh, the work and handle the workload that, uh, that is required of the profession. Um, and it's a, uh, it's a gap that just getting, uh, it, it's, it's a skills shortage, the gap is just getting bigger. Yeah, look, I think I, it, it, it's amazing that, you know, um, the firms I was with last week and I had lunch with one in particular on Friday that we, we sort of got into this discussion and it was interesting that they that, that that's a massive uh, barrier to, to growth. You know, they mm. want to bring on new people. They want to offer uh, new opportunities within the industry yet, you know, they've, they've got this ceiling. They're saying, well, unless we can find people, PJ, this is a continued problem to our, to our top line, which then obviously affects our bottom line. And we're talking about mastering profit here. So it's an interesting one. So why do you think this is happening? Uh, um, well, I'll just pick up on your point firstly, which is that it, it's happening across the profession. It's not only in the, um, in the big firms, but it's in the small firms. And, and in our business, we're working with, um, with single practitioner firms through to multi-partner firms to top 20 firms. Um, they all have the same issue. And look, I think there's probably, it, it's multiple causes for it, but um, it's easy to say that it was caused by the COVID pandemic or something like that. But I think it's, uh, it's deeper than that. I think there's, a, um, uh, there's an increasing demand for, uh, for professional services and therefore an increasing demand 
uh, for professional accountants that uh, that we just haven't been able to to fill. I think that there's a limited supply of skilled professionals in the accounting profession, and uh, that's partly um, been caused by um, a delay in wages growth in the profession compared to. Uh, uh, commercially based uh, uh, salaries for professionals. And that's been going on for some time. Um, I think um, also um, uh, accounting technology has really changed the nature of accounting. And I'm not sure if we as a profession have kept up with those changes, particularly in, um, uh, in, in some of the technology that we're working on. And, uh, and that's partly caused by the other reason, which I think is um, uh, we're all becoming increasingly aware of this, um, at the senior levels, there is an aging workforce um, developing amongst the accounting profession, um, such that um, uh, the number of um, you know, qualified professionals at the partner level is decreasing. The guys are moving out of the profession, they're retiring and moving on to uh, greener pastures. But I, I think if I was to pick them, they, they are probably uh, the top reasons that uh, that yeah. that I'm seeing when I talk to other professionals. Yeah, I would agree, hundred percent. So, so when we're talking, let's say, skill shortage, skills gaps, um, what sort of skills gap may affect businesses? You know, I suppose for our for all of our listeners listening to this, are you you okay to go into a little bit of detail around that, and you know the the effects of you know the effects of not having those right skills? And I sort of mentioned mm. a little bit before. Mm. Like that, going into a little bit of detail based yeah, sure. on in your sure. experience. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I think that it's much more than just uh, not being able to get the staff and do the job. Um, I, I think one of the issues is that um, uh, the specialisation that occurs in our profession, particularly in the larger firms, means that there is an incredible need for education um, and upskilling that um, for one reason or another, um, it's a limited number of people who are doing that, uh, who are taking on those upskilling needs that are required. Um, so at the higher levels, um, the skills base is just not available. Um, and then it's also occurring at the, at the mid levels as well. So um, uh, seniors and supervisors are, are um, not being trained up fast enough from the graduate intermediate level. And I think also that we're just not taking off on enough graduates at the moment. Um, it's easy to say um, that let's go and get somebody out of, the, uh, out of the workforce that we poach from someone else. But simply poaching from someone else means that there's a gap in some other firm and they've got to be filled some way or other. And I think ultimately the, the, the solution to that has to be um, uh, recruitment and training within the profession. And we've got um, uh, fantastic professional organisations and fantastic universities that are available to assist that. Um, as a profession, we've just, as, as accountants and firm owners, we've got, just got to step up and be, be prepared to take that on and provide the training, much the same as it was, was many years ago as our profession was developing. Very, very much agree with all of that. And I think the key around that as well, which we all know, the old Economics 101, we go back to our high school days and, you know, again, uh, when there's a, a skill shortage as well here in a, a demand or a lack of demand forces up price. So we end up paying high prices for people that may not have the skill or the experience as well. So therefore, when we're talking about here, we're talking about how to master profit, that eats into profits because you can't get the recovery that you're looking for out of those people where if you were able to get the recoveries that we could have got maybe three or four years ago, I believe that's come down quite a bit. So that's the challenge then to our industry of how do you continue to do that? I think also there's a balancing act between the... Uh, the development of the uh, skill sets of the individual and the technology that's available. I mean, technology has been an incredible driver um, to the accounting profession and it's only going to go, go more. Um, and it, it, as, as a firm, we need to make sure that we can balance that between the development of our people and, uh, and the continuing development of our, uh, uh, of our technology. Yeah, well said, well said. So mate, for our listeners, um, is there a is there a five to six point plan that they could work towards to you know again we get sort of in this stage now where you know we're sort of leading into the new financial year which is ridiculous although let's give thought to that because this is probably a great opportunity for a lot of our firms and listeners to say right what can I start thinking about is there a plan that you can suggest that they can start thinking about 
Yeah, it's got to be a plan. Um, it, it, I think you, you need to look at the, a couple of different things. Firstly, is your existing staff and then your growth plan and the staff that you need to get. But I, I think coupled with that also is the, um, the, the exit planning for the staff who are moving on, whether they're retiring or whatever. So this has got to be a, a holistic approach to, um, uh, to, the, to, to the talent pool, including your existing future and past staff. Um, first thing I'd say is the investment in the development of your existing staff. Um, your staff are the most valuable asset that you have in your firm. And, you know, it, it's important that we continue an investment in the professional development and the cultural development of our teams um, such that they want to stay with us, that they want to grow with us, that they see careers with us and that they see that their future allows them to grow with us. So th that would be the first thing. The, the, probably the second thing I think is then um, having made sure that your existing staff are uh, well under control in terms of their development and uh, uh, and culture, the culture within the firm is to to look around at other talent pools. So, um, and this particularly can't, becomes important at the graduate level. You know, for example, hiring graduates from the universities and the colleges um, is a, is a talent pool that we can take on. And I said earlier that I think the profession has to step back to the basics in relation to that and look at how we train our graduates. Um, and then the other one thing is uh, is looking at possibly whether we can recruit professions from other disciplines um, and help bring them back into bring either bring them into the firm for the first time or bring them back into the firm as a way of bridging the talent gap. I mean, keep in mind that uh, one of the biggest uh, leakages of talent from the accounting profession is people moving to uh, from the profession to commerce. So looking at ways to be able to retain them within the profession without leaving to go to commerce or finding ways that we can bring them back to the profession um, or, as I said, re recruiting from other, other related fields. Um, and, and one that's uh, important to me that, I, that I've been working with for the last nine years is um, uh, that we should be considering outsourcing certain tasks to other, certain, uh, to other uh, service providers. And I'm not necessarily saying that we're talking about offshore um, accounting service providers such as my firm, um, but also looking through the task flow and looking to see whether or not there is some of that can, that can be taken out and given to uh, and, and moved to other disciplines so that it's actually freeing up your internal resources um, and also accesses, accessing specialised talent when it's needed, um, particularly when that, that talent's hard to find in-house. Um, and if I could just go back to the other one, which I think is, a, is, is your team is your team culture, um, making sure that you've got a positive workplace um, for people to come to work. Um, you know, you need to encourage collaboration amongst your team, encouraging teamwork, en encourage knowledge sharing. Um, I think they're probably, I don't know how many that was, Paul. Did you say five? I think I gave you four. How's that? That's okay. That's okay. Look, the, the, the key thing in this is making sure that, yeah, you are thinking differently. And I think... Um, doing what I do and then coming into contact with so many firms that I come into contact with, it is a consistent message that firms have been challenged to think differently. Partners have been challenged to think differently. Um, yes, the cultural aspects is a massive one. And we'll talk about that later on in this series as well. But I think the ability to, you've just got to start thinking differently and uh, sort of whether it's using, like you're saying, people offshore, like, a profit master type of employee, or I think the good part about this, sorry, it's not an or, the good part about this is, and we you sort of touched on the COVID side, I think there's a lot more flexibility in our workplace nowadays. I think maybe three or four years ago, there would have been a lot more firms that would have said, no, we're not allowing people to work from home. We're not allowing this, we're not allowing that. How do we deal with security? How do we deal with data? And I think you mentioned it as well, the ability for a lot of the IT and the, the advancements in our tech and our tech stacks have also allowed that to take place. Um, during that COVID period, team members proved that they can actually be quite productive. And again, I know speaking to a lot of the firms, they've got that balance right. And then it's about making sure that, yeah, whether they've got people working from home two days a week, three days a week, and whether that resource is working from here in Melbourne or in the Philippines where you are right now, it doesn't matter. It's about bringing the culture together, the management, the reporting, 
and then the outcomes. I'd, I'd agree with that. And I think that uh, Australian firms now, uh, I mean, the, the larger firms have been doing this for some time, but uh, there's also an expectation now, and I think we're past the time of, of employers saying we will not allow work from home or hybrid arrangements. We're past that. Um, the technology is such that um, work from home and hybrid is possible. Um, the technology is such that security systems are capable of handling um, the requirements of, uh, of professional firms handling private information. And I think that uh, the, the, um, the things that I spoke about that are still required in dealing with the skills gap, um, it's only um, uh, the work from home and hybrid uh, development is only an adjunct to what is happening already. And what I mean by that is that we've still got to be able to deal with things like collaboration, teamwork, knowledge sharing, and all of that sort of stuff. We've got to make sure that if we're going to work with these new methods, these new technologies, that the basic things that uh, are required um, for those for that collaboration and so on are still being met. Otherwise, we will continue to see a skills gap as people move to other places and uh, have the perception that they can get those things elsewhere. Yeah, brilliant. And I couldn't, couldn't agree more and well said. Well, mate, there you go. Looks like we're just wrapped up our series two, episode one. So it's, it's it, again, it goes fast. So if you're with us, continue to please stay with us. I hope you've enjoyed our first episode of series two of Talking Numbers, Mastering Profit. Rich, thanks for joining us. To all Good of you who have joined us, stay with us. It is a six part series. We're going to continue to release the other five episodes as well. So our next episode is talking about, are you a leader or a manager? And we're going to break down who is what and who is who in the zoo. So again, to help you to try and again, formulate how do you really create your team and what you should be doing from a leadership point of view and a management point of view. So thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay tuned for episode two. Join us at Profit Master. Passionate people, passionate careers.